Right, let's start with uh, profit and sustainability in the Premier League and the headlines generated from Richard Masters' appearance at a CMS uh, committee hearing uh, today. Uh, gentlemen, this is um, obviously going to catch a lot of people's eye. Uh, we're going to start with the, uh, with the Telegraph. Premier League sets date over Manchester City's 115 financial breach charges, but will not reveal it, uh, Miguel. What do you make of this? I presume there are lawyers at play here, and it's, but um, it seems strange to kind of mention it and then not tell us when it is. Well, I suppose part of that is because there has to be the, you know, the feeling of a, a fair process on all sides and that there are confidentiality concerns. Uh, this was a story, of course, reported before. I think it was Mike Keegan that broke first in Daily Mail about the actual date being set. Uh, and I think that has come out as uh, autumn later this year before a potential resolution in 2025. But of course, I think as a lot of people even in football are saying, that might not be the end of the story because, I mean, whatever, whatever happens next... There's going to be immense fallout if City aren't happy with the um, with the with whatever happens. There's a possibility of appeals. On the other side, if other Premier League clubs aren't happy, um, there's the potential for fallout there. Uh, there is probably one point made to make on this. I mean, because there's been a lot of chatter about why the Everton Forest cases say are uh, likely to be so swift in comparison, <clears throat> but there is a their kind of normal procedure in the sense of the Premier League going through these accounts every season, whereas the City case is from uh, historic accounts um, and it's where a case has to be built. And obviously there's a lot more complexity to it and uh, a lot higher stakes as well. But um, yeah, maybe it was slightly surprising that actually Ma uh, Richard Masters confirmed the date, but uh, not that surprising he didn't say that too much more about it. That's generally been the Premier League stance. Yeah, Jason, I mean, the, the Telegraph saying here that uh, Judgment Day looms for City. I mean, when we eventually do get this date and we do get this hearing, this could be one of the biggest in the history of the game. Yes, uh, but unfortunately, we won't get the date uh, because the Premier League, in its own wisdom and the way that it operates, keeps everything quiet and keeps everything behind closed doors. And this is one of the frustrations with dealing with the clubs in the Premier League. Obviously, the clubs, the Premier League only dances to the tune of the clubs in terms of the rules in which they operate. But actually, people say, oh, it's the lawyers and so on and so forth. It's not the lawyers. It's the clubs themselves who insist that these procedures are, are kept so quiet. And, you know, I think it's faintly ridiculous. Actually, the Premier League's chief executive can go to the DCMS select committee today and say, oh, yes, the date's been set. But by the way, I, I can't tell you what that date is. I mean, as if it's some great secret that's got to be kept. I, I do find it very maddening dealing with the Premier League on these matters. Uh, I had an awful lot of this myself when I, I did a lot of work on the, the, the Saudi Arabian-led takeover of Newcastle United. Honestly, it was like trying to get blood out of a stone, trying to get any information from anyone about this that story. And it's always the same with the Premier League. You know, you have this constant battle to try and get information out of them. And I find it very frustrating and quite annoying, actually, that they, they don't aren't more transparent in the way they operate. And I think they just got wrapped up in the fact that the, the clubs are privately owned and they just seem to sort of want to keep everything secret. And that's that's at least even more suspicion. So we have this situation, as Miguel has touched upon, where 115 charges being faced by Manchester City. And, and by the way, we're reaching the first anniversary of those charges being being laid against them. And people are talking about that in, in terms of, of the charges against Everton and, and now obviously Nottingham Forest. But they are different things, as Richard Masters said today. But the problem is, we just don't get enough transparency. We don't get enough proper explanation as to what's going on. Everything is like drawing teeth and it's very, very frustrating for journalists and obviously even more importantly for fans to try and find out what's going on with these, with these clubs. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Everton and, and Forrest, uh, Miguel. It, Everton, yeah, in the back of the sun, Goodison boss Dyche's fears for club after FFP blow. I mean, they, they've already been deducted 10 points. They haven't heard, their, their appeal hasn't been heard yet and they could be hit with further punishment here in the context of what's happening with Manchester City and everything else. How much do you feel for, for Sean Dyche and Everton in all of this? Yeah, I mean, even separate from the previous uh, case from, er from earlier this season, I think you could, it is, no, no matter what you think on that, it's possible to feel a bit of sympathy with everyone here because of this double jeopardy issue that wouldn't actually apply if they were in the EFL. But on that as well, I mean, this kind of, as, as Jason's touched upon, the lack of transparency that fosters into this uncertainty, which seems like it, it's a general tone of the game right now, you know, reflected by the fact that it feels like we're constantly talking about off-pitch issues. And even, another aspect of this, just again, touching on something Jason said there, is 
I mean, the Premier League's lack of dialogue on this feeds into, I think, a general lack of transparency in football at the moment. I mean, even the original uh, Everton decision or, say, the the, um, the announcement of the uh, Manchester City charges last year, well, they went with, with developments like, say, the, the recent World Cup decisions of FIFA, the, uh, the, the recent U uh, European Championship decisions, even the election of presidents, where you don't even have press conferences anymore. No, no one's explaining anything. And it does leave this almost this vacuum. And like even, even today with that hearing, which I have to say I thought the level of questioning was very poor when this is a chance to have some sort of structured interrogation into the way the game is going. Uh, but that, that, was, that was a rare moment where people in power now uh, are, are, are speaking to the public in that way. And in the case, say, of the Everton situation or with Forrest, it has men say that actually... A lot of the discussion has come from the Everton side, similar with Newcastle over the past few days, where it's almost like the narrative that's been put out has been one where, you know, uh, the proper and sustainability rules are, are, are being rigorously questioned, but that's not necessarily the case. And really, I mean, the Premier League, I think, should be much more, uh, as well as a lot of other governing bodies, should be a lot more public facing with this. And as Jason says, offer us more transparency, because, I mean, sport is actually dependent on transparency and the sense that, what you see in the pitch, you can completely trust.